Remember our glorious transition to electric vehicles? Yeah, how's that going? Last year, I said that I expect a shift towards more hybrid vehicles. Was I right? Was I wrong? Let's have a look. I recently caught my daughter reading The Economist. I'm now afraid she'll ask that her pocket money be inflation adjusted. More seriously, my entire family is happy with our Economist subscription. And if you want to make your family happy too, I have a special offer for you today. The Economist is one of the few publications that consistently cover science, politics, economics and global affairs without dumbing it down or hyping it up. I myself prefer the print version because I spend too much time staring at screens anyway. But of course, you can read The Economist online or with their app where you can find the digital version of the weekly print edition as well as short videos and now longer video discussions with their editors, subscriber-only podcasts and audio versions of their articles, which is great for commuting or running errands. They recently had an article, for example, about how much talent goes to waste because we're bad at identifying and supporting aspiring scientists, especially from the developing world. They are great at explaining explaining the issue, putting it in context and exploring recruitment strategies that have worked in the past. And here comes the special offer. You'll get 35% off their subscription if you use my link economist.com slash Sabine. And now back to the science news. You'll hate this, but it seems I was right. Let me just read you some headlines. Hybrid vehicle sales in the United States continue to rise as electric and plug-in vehicle shares remain flat. Hybrids hit new high in German new car market. Hybrid sales boom in Europe. Indeed, hybrids are more popular in Europe than battery electric. They dominate in most of the EU except for Norway and Iceland. Some terminology. The cars that are usually labeled as hybrids have fairly small batteries that are primarily charged by a gasoline engine. This is why they're often not listed together with battery electric vehicles. There are also plug-in hybrid vehicles, which are a different thing. They have a larger battery that can be externally charged and they have a decent range for driving all electric. These are also on the rise in Germany. A similar thing is going on in China and also in Australia. Overall, the global use of electric vehicles has been growing nicely. That's one way to look at it, at least. But as a recent report, report from the analyst firm PricewaterhouseCoopers points out, despite this significant growth, automotive electrification has not been as rapid as some experts had predicted just a couple of years ago. They also dryly note that much of the current geopolitical uncertainty is centered around the new presidential administration in the United States. The global increase in electric vehicle sales, they say, is largely driven by China. But in the past, Last year, there has also been a substantial uptick in new EV car sales in Germany and the UK. So things are changing, but slowly. Why are things going slower than expected? One possible reason is that while the price of batteries has dramatically decreased over the past 15 years, the price of electric vehicles, at least in the US, hasn't. Why this is happening is hard to say. The authors of this nature comment speculate that it might be because electric vehicles are still largely marketed as luxury cars for the rich, so many Manufacturers can charge more, knowing that the customers aren't bothered by the price. Then again, this, they say, doesn't really explain it because EVs largely remain a loss-making venture. Another issue is that the necessary infrastructure, especially grid upgrades, aren't coming along as quickly as necessary. The International Energy Agency has been warning about this for years. A review article that just recently appeared summarized the problems that electric vehicles will cause eventually by putting extra demand on the grid. Transformer overloads, frequency distortions, voltage instability, grid overload and congestion, as well as a general decline in power use efficiency. And that doesn't touch on the question 
of where the energy is supposed to come from. Those are serious problems, and if the grid upgrade doesn't come along quickly enough, which seems to be the case, then governments are likely to put limits on who can charge where for how long. This is rather foreseeable. My interpretation is therefore that hybrids are the consumer's way to deal with the uncertainty surrounding the energy transition. Will it work or not? Will policies change or not? Either way, buy a hybrid and you're likely to be good for the next decade and then you'll probably need a new car anyway. Planned obsolescence never looked so sustainable. Let me be clear, it's not that I'm against electric vehicles. I agree that electric vehicles are the future and combustion engines are on the deathbed. However, I think that many enthusiasts underestimate how much the existing infrastructure has been built around fossil fuels and how long it'll take to change this. That people generally underestimate how long it takes to change infrastructure is also why I'm super skeptical about all those net zero plants, heat pumps for everyone, carbon capture to save the day, the hydrogen economy, and so on. Yes, these all work on paper. In reality, getting it done will take a long time. And unfortunately, it's time that we don't have. And this is why I keep talking about nuclear power. Yes, it's dangerous and it isn't renewable. And yes, that's the waste problem. In the long run, it's not the best solution. But it's the existing technology that we know works and it would buy us time. I guess the bottom line is that changing the world is kind of difficult. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.